Hmm. Okay. Thank you, my three and me. Guys, this is how I'm going to go live. I don't want to be rude, but everybody has different equipment, and I'm not going to keep trying to change it in the middle of a live, because when I do that, it the screen locks. I have an iPhone XS. It's a very good phone, and this is the position that it was in when you guys started telling me to change it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you coming back. So, with all due respect, I'm not going to change it again, okay? Thank you, Helena Tyler. Now, i got to go back and find um, the new video. So... Where I was, was talking about fertilizers. I have a few minutes. I left off with um, worm castings and worm casting tea, compost tea. I told you about the homemade compost. I told you about comfrey. I told you don't get the kind that you grow from seeds. Get a cutting from someone. And I also... Um, I'm trying to uh, put it back on my laptop. Bear with me, please. Um, and I told you about the fish fertilizer, um, the Alaskan, whatever. You all know what I'm talking about. And then the other one by Neptunes that has the um, seaweed in it. Okay, so basically that's all I use. Now, occasionally I will put lime in my high... Rachel, occasionally I put garden lime. About once every month, I will put that around my peppers and my um, tomatoes to prevent blossom in rot. Now, I know a lot of people crush up the eggshells and put that in there, but it's just my opinion from my experience. Hello, Miss Grando, I'm doing good. Um, uh, if you're talking to me, <laughs> um, it's just my belief that the eggshells don't work as fast as much pe most people think it is. And I recommend that you put the garden line um, in your soil when you first transplant your seedlings or if you buy them from the store. And also, I recommend that you um, give your peppers and your tomatoes, about a fourth a cup. Just sprinkle it around outward from the roots, the root ball, and water it in. But even if you don't water it in, don't worry about it because it will not burn your plants. Okay, thank you, Renee, for coming back. Um, Candy's Container Gardening, hello. Hello, Rob and family from Esson's Family Garden. Um, I had to, to log out and start back because I had to, uh, was advice to change the camera around, but this just this works for me. Okay. Was there another question about the fertilizers? And of course, I use coffee grounds, eggshells, and banana peels in my compost with uh, leaves, shredded up paper. Hello, Miss Wisdom. Hello, Mahogany. Best yet, good evening. And, um, yeah, so, and all of my old plants, like when I pull up my tomato plants, tomato, uh, uh, banana plants, pepper plants, I kind of chop it up a little bit and throw it over into the compost. Okay, and on occasion, I have bought black cow. And I don't know if you all know this, but it's kind of running out. They're running out of potty mix and a lot of garden soils and compost in different parts of the country because I can't get black cow here because I used up all of my homemade compost. Okay, hold your question, Chantel, about Epsom salt. I'll answer it next. I used up all my homemade compost in my emergency garden, the food that I'm donating. I was inspired by the Holy Spirit when I went into the grocery store 
two days before our city shut down, and, I, and I, I got a video on it, and I just saw all of the shelves wiped out. Uh, green beans that normally sell for 50 cents a can was marked up to $1.79. Grapes was $4.99 a pound, and I just said, no, not my family, not my senior citizen friends. I'm going to grow some extra food to donate. Okay, somebody ordered comfrey from Amazon. Very good, Mahogany. I hope you got the cuttings. Some of the same merchants, hello, the, uh, the bull. Some of the same merchants on Amazon are the same merchants that are on eBay and Etsy. So, yeah, um, good deal. Now, somebody mentioned Epsom salt. Okay, now, I know some of you are not going to like what I have to say about Epsom salt because I used to use it for about 10 years. When I switched and started adding amendments to my soil, like mycorrhizal fungi, like azomite rock dust, like biochar, I didn't see the need to put Epsom salt because that is already in those natural ingredients. So, no, I do not use Epsom salts. Good, Mahogany, you got the cuttings. Hi, Victoria. So, I don't use Epsom salt. I think, you know, we see other people doing it, so we do it. But if, you, if you've if you been gardening as long as I have, and I say 30 years, but guys, it's like 40. In 1974, the year that I got married, my husband and I rented a basement apartment, and I had fluorescent lights hanging from the ceiling growing house plants. That's when my love of gardening started. Actually, it started with my grandparents when I was a little child. I was the granddaughter that didn't mind helping Big Mama and Big Daddy. Some of my cousins and siblings, you know, probably didn't enjoy it as much as me. Um, my first vacation after things come down in the country is a camping trip. Now, I've traveled a lot. I've been to the Bahamas several times. I've been to Acapulco, Mexico. I've been to almost every state in the Union. I can't even think right now where I've been. Uh, 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 cruises, Caribbean cruises, uh, Cancun. I've been to a lot of places. But you know what my best vacation memories come from? Can anybody guess? Because I'm a nature girl, camping. I love to be surrounded by nature. My family and I, two years ago, went up to the uh, mountains in Tennessee and we rented condos. And I mean, it was just beautiful. Bears around. <laughs> Hello, bear fruit gardener. Bear fruit gardener. Hey, Stan. I love your sense of humor, Stan. And uh, yeah, I love nature. So I've been gardening for about 40 years, but I just say 30 because that's when I started doing it seriously. And i just been growing fruit trees since I retired at the age of 60. So I've been growing fruit trees for six years. Now, my late husband had a few fruit trees. That was his thing. I used to see him putting, uh, pointing to the fireplace. I used to see him shoveling the uh, ashes from the fire, fireplace and putting it around the fruit trees. I didn't ask any questions. I just grew my tomatoes and peppers and let him do his thing. But now, and then he, he was an avid fisherman and he would fish. And I got to learn to lower my voice because if you weren't on here earlier, my brother, my baby brother, who is an orator, he's a pastor. He said, Cheryl, you're talking too loud. Because I guess I was all hyped up, especially that video that I was nervous because I couldn't get on. And I'm slightly hard of hearing in my left ear. He said, you are almost screaming. So... Every now and then, I got to remind myself to woo and come back down and, and lower my voice. But um, what I was saying about, yeah, I and mean, so he would sweep the ashes up from the fireplace and put it around the trees. He had jujube, pear tree, a couple apple trees, grapes, that kind of thing. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but I was very depressed after he passed and I had all the stuff cut down. I know it was a sin. I was going through something. I had a major plumbing problem with roots growing in my uh, drain. And it cost a lot of money to get it done. I wasn't taking care of the trees. Every time I tried to go out and read on my sun deck, 
I was attacked by uh, wasp. So I cut them down. I had them, the landscaper cut them down. And he said, ma'am, are you sure? And looking back on it later, I do realize that I was depressed because we were married for a very long time. Uh, if he had still been alive, we'd probably been married, I think, 46 years. Got married in 1974. I, I'm not good with dates. And, and when something um, makes me sad, I don't. I, I take it out of my mind. I don't like to think about it. But uh, I know he, he's in a better place. He had a brain aneurysm. So let me get back to the fruit trees. So I started growing them, you know, uh, after I retired. And I learned a whole lot from um, this community. And then, uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a retired salon owner and cosmetology educator. And uh, being in this house by myself, that I found solace on the internet in 2015. Hello, Growing Progress. I found my health made me retire early. And when I started seeing people on YouTube, I said, oh, I can help people like that too. So it was basically about gardening. If you go back and you look at some of my earlier videos, you'll see that they lasted maybe not even a minute or two minutes or five minutes. But And I had no idea that you can get paid for being on YouTube. It just gave me something to do to fill my day, to give me purpose. So um, new fruit tree owners, our first peach. Let me tell you something, woman to woman, if you haven't read it already. Peach trees do not like wet feet. I killed about five of them. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that. I put them in the ground, and if anybody has been following me, you know that it has been raining like crazy here. We've had flash floods for almost the whole month. Okay? So we have that kind of funky weather, and when that happens... I put my peach trees in the ground. Every time I buy, I'll buy another one. I'll go up to Lowe's and get another one. Then I started ordering and doing more research. And Lead Farmer 73 helped me out with a lot of watching a lot of his videos. And I started putting them in containers. And then after the trees got uh, acclimated to the environment because they came from a, you know another state. And then if you put them in a pot, you can raise them up and they'll drain really well. And then the trees started flourishing. And then after they got a little bit bigger, I started putting them in the ground about the third year. So be careful if you can you can with the digital pressure, pressure cooker. No, unless it's, I'm told, it, unless it's one of the new instant pots that has the pressure canning feature on it. A pressure cooker and a pressure canner are totally two different things. Okay, so now I'm going to hold off with the questions for a while, and I'm going to go over some things that I, I intended tonight, and then we'll close it out with a couple of questions. Is that okay, everybody? Hi, Naked Gardener. Hi, neighbor. Hi, Tara. Sylvia Reed. I bought the blueberry bush. Okay, very good. Is that okay? Yes, skinny boy, Randy. Okay, so now let me get on with my presentation. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the onions that I dehydrated in my last video. And I've gotten some emails. I saved my cute little jars and I put them in. Now, those of you that have families, this is, can you see that? This is not going to be enough for you. But for me, this will last me a whole year. Now, I can also take the onions, and this is an old bottle, but it's garlic powder. I can take the onions, and I can grind them up into a powder with this little gadget here. You stay your seasoning containers. That's right. I'm, I'm serious. I mean, nobody looks at my seasoning container, so why throw them away? So I could have added that to the video. And I think it was Miss Homestead Hart. And by the way, check out her. She's a canning queen. I love her. She's much younger than me, but I tell her I want to be her when I grow up, even though I've probably been canning longer. But I love Homestead Hart. And if you didn't know, Lead Farmer 73 got this collaboration together with me 
and Homestead Heart to bring you guys more canning and ways to preserve our harvest, especially during this pandemic. Everybody is growing more food. I thought I saw Garden Love in here. She has a wonderful channel and she's squeezing in extra garden beds. You guys saw me buying containers and wait till tomorrow morning or tonight and you see the video that I dropped about growing even more sweet potatoes. I have enough sweet potatoes canned for myself, but I'm growing more for my emergency garden to be donated. So keep your old containers. Yes, when you dehydrate your, your um, onions, you can turn it into powder by grinding it. And by the way, I do the same thing with ginger, elderberry tree, and a fig tree. Very good. Hold on, you hold your question. Right now, let me do my little presentation about preserving, and then I'll get your question, Chantel, okay? Because I have elderberries growing on my little tree. It's actually a bush that I bought, and it's not even a year old. It'll be, it'll be a year old in the fall, and I've got food growing on it. Thank you so much, Naked Garden. Okay, so let me do this real quick, guys, and I'll get all your questions, I promise. If, you, if you're willing to stay, I'm willing to help you. Now, we all, by the way, can help each other, okay? And there are a lot of people in this um, chat right now that have wonderful, wonderful channels. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to say if you have a channel, but I want them all together in the feed. So just wait until I, I ask you, okay? Now, let's hot candy. So now, you can make onion powder just like you can do garlic powder. And you can do the same thing with garlic. You can dehydrate your garlic. Have any of you ever dehydrated or caramelized onions? Hit me, yes or no. Man, I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm, when I, 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 I felt like my mama was back, was alive and she was in the kitchen cooking because it reminded me of my mother's meatloaf. When you dehydrate onions, yes, Suzette. Yes, Nikki Gar, it smells so good. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna put my stuff to the side as I introduce you to it. Okay, now, here's another thing that I grow, hibiscus. I do the um, Texas Star Hibiscus, and I think it's my highest rated uh, viewed video on YouTube. I can't remember how, much it, how many videos, but it's up in the thousands. I grow Texas Star Hibiscus because it is a perennial, it's a native plant, and Texas Star Hibiscus has been medically proven to lower your blood pressure. And if you don't know already, I'm not going to tell you everything is wrong with me, but I will tell you I'm a cancer survivor, and I have kidney disease and high blood pressure. So I lower it by having a cup of hibiscus tea. I'm telling you guys, it is delicious. And I use monk fruit natural sweetener in it. It tastes like sugar and it doesn't have an aftertaste. Grow you some Texas Star Hibiscus. I bought the seeds off of eBay. Now I know a lot of people don't like eBay, but I've had some good success. Look at the rating from the customer because eBay and PayPal are the same company really, sub companies. And if they have a low rating on there, they have to publish it. So if you see somebody with a 96% rating and all these negative and neutral um, reviews, don't buy from them. I don't buy from them unless they have 98 point something or higher. And I got my seeds from eBay. And you never have to plant the Texas Star Hibiscus again in my zone. Now, you guys know how to, if you're new, because I've got a lot of new people to my channel because of the way the world is right now and food shortages, a lot of people are gardening who have never gardened before. So if I'm talking in a way that some of you that have been gardening for a while, if you're feeling like, why is she being so elementary? We have to keep in mind, Naked Gardener had a beautiful, the Naked Gardeners had a beautiful video I watched just before I came on about uh, a lot of people are new to gardening. So we have to keep that in mind that we have the ability to help a lot of people. So I'm breaking it down for the new gardeners, Texas Star Hibiscus. Any hibiscus will work, the flowers, but why keep planting them over and over, tropical ones, when you can grow one that is cold hearty? The next thing I wanna share with you is, and I'm gonna to get to canning, is some mint. And I have some ground up real fine. Then I have some ground up in leaves just to put in my coffee maker. 
Yes, we have to revamp a lot of our videos. I, I know. And I appreciate, I think I told you. It was an excellent, excellent composition the way you did that video, Nikki Gardner, because we got, we got to help our people. And when I say people, I'm not talking about a particular race. I'm talking about we got to help people all over the world. That song comes from my heart when I say heal the world, make it a better place. And my better place is right out that door, my garden. We got to help people. We have an obligation. Okay, so mint. I grow a lot of mint. I love, love, love mint tea. And sometimes I put a little mint with my hibiscus. Now, this is something, this is an old used container, and I'm not going to grow this anymore because I'm going to tell you why. I don't like it. Hi, Charlie. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Miss G. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lisa, Alita Hill, Carter Eats, Crystal Pets and Plants, uh, Buttercup. I'm just mentioning people that Wolf Packs, Joanne Cody. Now, a lot of people like cilantro. I don't. It tastes a little like soapy to me. And I know it's in a lot of Italian dishes like spaghetti and pasta and lasagna. But I just figured out I don't like it. <laughs> the last time I grew was 2018. Okay? But it's a very easy plant to grow. Get you some cilantro. Some people drink it as teas. I can't think of the reason why. And you can look these up later. Then I do my red pepper. And I grind them up in the, if you're just coming on, in this chop and grind. And it will pulverize them. And I take my red pe peppers and I dehydrate them. And... Then I have my own. I have some in flakes that I keep the seeds in, and then I have some with just the skin and a little seeds. Okay? Red pepper flakes. Basil. I'm not planting any this year because I have too much. I have a lot of, lot of basil. Let me get up and show you something. Some things, I don't know how I'm going to have to, can you see in there? That's the hibiscus. Somebody said they have chemo. I went through chemo too. Uh, and then some things. I would dehydrate. And if I have too much, I just put it in the bag. You see right there? That's basil. Okay? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bags on this table that I need to just put on my gloves, crush up, and put into these containers. Grow your own. Because when you are buying these little seasonings from the grocery store or Whole Foods, you don't know how long that stuff been there, y'all. Grow your own. These, these plants are very easy to grow. Parsley. I need to grow some more parsley. I have some somewhere. I've got another container of parsley somewhere. Rosemary. I don't need any more rosemary. I got one of these and then a whole jar of rosemary. I'm not growing any more for a couple of years because it's just me. Okay, celery. This is the first time I have preserved celery through dehydration. I have some in a powder. Can you see that? See how fine that is? And then I have some that if I want to rehydrate and put in a pasta salad or a pasta dish or something like that or a soup. Look, tastes good in vegetable soup. Okay. Hey, Led, thank you. Thank you very much. So, yes, dehydrate celery. Now, I'm going to show you something. I know right now we are not having people just call and say, hey, you want to play cards and stuff like we did in the old days? But if you do... You should always have, I'm moving on from the, the preservatives, uh, preservatives. I'm moving on from the uh, herbs and teas and spices, okay? But you need to have something up in your cabinet uh, when times get better that you can always pull out if you got company or if you're going to have a dinner or whatever. And those days are coming back, guys. Things will never be the same, but it's going to get better. And I, I mentioned this the other week, but I want to mention to you again. I have cowboy candy. If you haven't had it before, I have them in the big jars, I have them in the medium-sized jars, and I have the small jars. Now, I know that I can always cut up some fruit, 
put it on the platter, put some wheat crackers. If I have some cream cheese and this jalapeno, it's sweet, it's spicy, it's hot, it's delicious. Deborah Sims, I dehydrate celery and onions together and mix it in small packages. Oh my God. Thank you, Green Organic Love. I need a new tripod. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Sis Elaine. No problem. My sister-in-law is in the house. Mimi53. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now let's get back to we're gonna uh, are we through with the questions about dehydrating? And I showed you in my last video, I have one of those big ones, nine Excalibur. But I also said in the video that you can dehydrate in your oven. I got a real old video, I think 2015, where I took a cookie rack, a cookie sheet, put it in the um, back of my car window, and put my tomatoes on top of it, rolled all, made sure all the windows were secure, and I sun dried my tomatoes. And some of you ladies and gentlemen in here are really good with your tools, with your hands, and you can build wooden platforms with drawer. I can see Nikki Gardner doing that. I know Lead Farmer can do it. I know Bull can do it. I know Rob from Esson's family. You can build those trays and put that wire mesh real thin so that nothing like ants and things will crawl through it. They have the, I don't know if it's chicken wire. You guys know I'm not good with stuff like that. My grandmother used to dehydrate her peach leaves in her oven. Yes. So you can use your oven. You can use the, uh, the uh, sun outside. And if you are like me and you want to go ahead and knock it out, you can do it with the dehydrator. Okay. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate you very much. Because I want me to get me a nice tripod that I can raise up high and low. Because the one that I have is like you can handheld, but it has a little stand, but it's really not that hot. And also, I want to um, buy me a, uh, a video camera so I can load the stuff up to my laptop and edit it that way as opposed to doing everything on my phone. But guys, I shoot all my videos on my phone. I upload them on my phone. So as time goes on, I know I'm going to get better and better. And if you knew me three years ago, you would say, you're doing pretty good because my children come home and do everything for me. But nobody has been in my home since February because I'm high risk. Okay, now, so I talked about dehydration, talked about having some snacks, I want to also go on and move on and talk about salt. Homestead Heart used the Himalaya salt, and it is wonderful. And she did a taco seasoning if, uh, today. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do it. It's wonderful. And what I liked about it is she didn't have a whole lot of salt in it because most of the seasonings, like the tacos or sloppy joe mix or whatever. I can't eat that stuff because one, it has preservatives in it. Two, it's just too much sodium for somebody that has high blood pressure. So I'm, try I'm trying to look for my other salt. Maybe I didn't bring it, but maybe I didn't put it out here. But if you're going to can anything and you want to keep your jars clear, and the food so you not cloudy so you can see it, you want to use pickling salt. Hi, Miss B. Washington. Hi, Wolf Packs. Lori Hunsaker. Okay. So, use pickling salt. All of us are growing cucumbers. I've been watching your videos. I try to comment as much as I can. Sometimes I'll just hit um, the like button, but I try to say something, a heart or something. I've been watching all your videos, and everybody's growing cucumbers. So, that's going to be a very easy food to process in your water bath canner because you're going to follow a uh, recipe to to the T so that it'll be safe for water bath canning. That is the easiest uh, food to process is water bath canning. And so you guys know that a lot of vegetables, as long as you pickle them with 5% acidity of vinegar, it's safe to water bath canning. Okay, speaking of water bath canning, I've got several video, uh, sorry, emails about you guys telling me that you want to do it, but you're afraid. And so I say, well, what exactly are you afraid of? 
and they say taking the jars out the canner. Okay. So now let me, I'm doing good. Oh, okay. So now let me ease your mind. Ergonomics is something that allows you to do something efficiently or proficiently. For example, when you go to the barber, one client may be short, another client may be tall. That barber can press that lever on that chair and raise it up. That's a piece of equip equipment that is made ergonomically for, for anybody, any height. Everybody got me? Same thing with a hair salon. We have salon chairs. We can move them around, ergonomics, so we don't have to keep running around the chair and wearing ourselves out. We just turn the chair and it swivels. I know some of you are going like, what is the point? <laughs> Let me see. Well, this little apparatus here is a jar lifter. It is designed ergonomically. It has rubber at the bottom. The wood handles is so that you won't lose the grip. Everybody with me? When you pick it up, the bottle is hot. So the rubber is going to cling to it. I don't care what you do, and this is not even hot. Just squeeze this part here, the handle, squeeze it to you. It's not going to fall. Don't be afraid that you're going to burn yourself. And now I'm going to say something right now that some of you may not like. Don't watch videos of people who try to scare you. They have a motive in trying to scare you. They want you to think that only, only they can teach you how to can. I'm here today to tell you, you can learn something from a lot of different people. Scaring people is not the way to educate. Now I'm gonna relate it back again to cosmetology. I work with some instructors that would get up and they would say, okay, multiracial class. Okay, we're gonna work, we're gonna learn chemical hair relaxing. And you gotta be careful because if you don't do it right, you can take somebody's hair out. You can make them go bald. That's the wrong approach. Then you have somebody that you just scared the hell out of, but you want them to do a relaxer. So don't scare people. Once you do this a couple of times, I promise you, you will not be nervous. And I am giving you my word that I will be here to help you. There are a lot of apps that you can do now, even if we're not on, like AT&T has FaceTime. My daughter and I FaceTime, and I see the, my kids, grandkids a lot. But there are other apps that you can use to FaceTime, uh, even if you don't have the same type of phone. For example, when my aunt passed away, my, sis, my daughter's in-laws FaceTime me from the UK to check on me. They meant a lot. And we were able to see each other. No, the, the, the video wasn't crystal clear, but we were able to help. So I am giving you my word that if you have never can before and you are afraid, I'm going to arrange a time with you and we will do a test FaceTime first and I'll be there to hold your hand to can. And I'm not asking for no money. Because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my mission. Okay? This is my purpose. I'm going to help our community preserve your harvest. You have my word. I don't care if I don't like you. If you say something that I don't like, I will help you. Okay? All right. Don't be afraid of those hot jars. Don't be afraid of the, the pressure, oh, pardon me, the pressure canner. Don't be afraid. Because as long as you let the gauge, the gear gauge go all the way down from 11 to zero, and once you remove the pressure cap, which is the weight, it is impossible for the canner to blow up. They blew up years ago because they didn't have these safety measures in place. 
and they blew up years ago because people did not let the pressure out first. They opened it up and it blew up. You, and these were pressure cookers too that people were canning out of when they should not have been. So trust me, guys, you are going to be safe when you're canning. I got you. I'm serious. You, you all looking at me? You look at my eyes. You can tell I'm sincere. I'm about ready to cry. And I don't like to get all emotional. I got you. Don't let nobody make you afraid. Okay? All right. Okay. So I talked about the safety precautions. In pressure canner, I told you the most easiest thing to do is water bath canning. You can can all fruits through water bath canning. You can can all vegetables with water bath canning, providing you pickle it. And everything else can be pressure canned. You can take that same procedure that I used for the caramelized onions in my video the other day. Substitute it for uh, Miss Hart did it. Her, Homestead Hart did the ground turkey. You you pressure can it the same way. The minutes are just a little bit longer for meat. Did you know that you can put bacon in a jar and can it? You sure can. Join some groups on Facebook too, and you'll see what these people are doing, and you will be amazed. Okay. Are there any questions? Hi, Miss T. Versation, you're new. Thank you for coming. Oh, yeah, I'm getting it together, Led. But sometimes people think people think it's all about money that you get um, a good feeling when you get good. You get money. Yes, it's nice to be compensated, but I get more gratification knowing that the light bulb went off in somebody's head. And, and they are not going to be bamboozled to thinking they got to pay $1.79 for a can of green beans that used to be 49 cents. I get more pleasure when I know that I've helped somebody and that light bulb went out. And I mean this from my heart. Somebody said, this is wonderful, just wonderful. People who retire can use their time to be unbothered. Yes. Traveling, you know, before the pandemic, doing all other kind of stuff. I'm a homebody and I like to communicate with people. And I'm going to say it again. I'll probably say it a couple of times. I didn't know anything about my machinization when I started doing videos in 2015. I just did it because I was a lonely person. And I wanted to feel, because I was forced into retirement for health reasons, I wanted to feel needed. And I wanted, and I needed to help people. If that makes sense. Chicken, turkey, and beans. One to can some vegetables too. Oh, somebody's asking you what you do. Very good. So now is the time that I want you all, thank you, Leah. I want you guys to tell me what you have already canned. Not what you want to can, what you have already canned. Let me hear from those people. One or two words. Tell me what you've canned. That's what it's about. People want to feel needed and loved. Yes, Ashley. Oh, goodness, Miss G, don't cry. Randy, thank you for saying you don't know how. We're gonna, I'm going to hold your hand, buddy. We're going to can some tomatoes this summer, okay? When you show emotion, it shows us just how passionate you are about what you are doing for others. Thank you. Somebody did bone broth. Very good. Let's talk about bone broth. Hey. This is what I was going to talk about. Bone broth. Ground turkey butternut squash. <laughs> this is what I'm canning tomorrow. My last two butternut squash. I'm canning tomorrow. I'm going to make a short video. I don't think I need to keep on doing the pressure canning part. But that's the part people like. Uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, sauces, peppers, and broth. Yes. Jellies, jams, apples, and pear sauce. Very good. Your hubby can can. All right. Red potatoes, gold potatoes, applesauce. Somebody said they're learning. Very good. 
Somebody got all their canning supplies. Very, very good. Strawberry jelly years ago. Yes, do you use pickling salt? I use pickling salt for everything because it keeps your jars pretty. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get that green bean jar. I showed you guys these green beans. Last one I have. They were canned January, no, September 2016. Can you see that? See how perfectly clear it is? Pickling salt. Had I used iodized salt, it would be cloudy. It would be cloudy. Use pickling salt. You can use Himalaya. You can use other salts, but pickling salt is the best. It makes the best presentation. Okay? All right. What about fruit? What about fruit? Putting salt on fruit? I don't understand your question about fruit. Do I need to re review the pH scale again? Every product, every liquid, every solid, every fruit or vegetable has a pH, potential hydrogen in that product. Can you can leftovers from the day before? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's talk about the pH. Right here is seven. Your blood, sweat, and tears are seven. That's why when you put those eye drops in your eyes and they don't burn you, because they have the same pH of your natural tear. That is why baby shampoo, when you put it on your baby's hair and it gets in their eyes and they don't cry, is because that pH in that baby shampoo is the same as their tears. But that doesn't make it a good shampoo because a good shampoo should be about five on the pH scale. So we have a lot of people washing their hair with baby shampoo and they're 60 and 70 years old and it makes your hair real dry, okay? So now let's talk about this. All of your fruit is acid. It could be water bath can. You can water bath can slice apples. You could do apple sauce. You could do whole pears, peel it, you know, take the corn stuff out. And you could put just water in it. No sugar. If you are diabetic, anybody diabetic in here? You can can your food, water bath can it. All of your vegetables with no sugar, and it will taste good. Lord, now I need some hair device. <laughs> advice. I'm the author of Healthy Hair Care Tips for Today's Black Woman, if you guys don't know that. That's my background, cosmetology. Okay. Ball candy lids are for 18 months now. But the food can last forever. Some things would change in the texture Yes, I agree with you. But it's still better than buying food in the grocery store in a can. Okay. Is this my pet playlist, Green Organic Love? I have type 2 diabetes. Even though you've never said it. Thanks for sharing that with us, uh, Randy. Um, I'm borderline. I've been borderline for 12 years. I watch what I eat. I don't do the sugar. I don't drink sodas. You see, this is zero calories. Just sparkling water with just a, a hint of lemon in it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hereditary. But we can't control it. Okay, thank you, Green Organic Love. I appreciate you, baby. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so Randy, all of your fruits and vegetables, you want to can them, the fruits, with no sugar? And anybody else? And Randy, I'm in that group too. I'm not singling you out. And and your pickles, your, your, uh, your, your vegetables, if you pickle them, Follow a balls recipe or a reliable recipe and pickle them with vinegar. Because a lot of people mess up. They think that they, you know, how many of you cook by scratch? 
I know we got some ladies that can cook in here and gentlemen too. I've seen you rob. I know you can get down. I've seen you cook bull. I've seen lead farmer cook. We can just take something. We can just, we don't have to measure our cornmeal. We don't have to measure the flour. We don't, thank you, Miss G. I appreciate you. We don't have to make, we just do a pinch of this and pinch of that. That's cool. But when you're preserving something, like you're taking green beans, this, this is plain green beans and water. But if I wanted, and this was pressure can, but if I wanted to water bath can them, I would have to take a certain amount of vinegar to add with the water to water bath can. And I'm switching sides because this is acid, which represents the water bath can. And over here is alkaline, which represents the pressure canning. So don't take a little bit of vinegar and add it in here and think you can water bath can it. No, 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 no. It's not going to destroy the toxins. You must get a reputable book like balls, like the other manufacturers, go to that website that I never can remember, the National something something for home food preservation. If anybody knows it, type it in, please. They have a lot of recipes. Don't make the mistake in doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You can do that with your spices. You can do that with your herbs, but you can't do it with that vinegar mixture for the um, pickling. Everybody got it? Okay. Now, somebody's mentioning fermenting. I'm glad you asked. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Anybody know what this is? Get closer. Here are the peels and the top and the bottom of the apples that I made the applesauce with. National Center for Home Preservation. Thank you, Don. You would think I would have a sticky note like I used to do in my office when I had problems remembering something. So I'm making apple cider vinegar. And, oh, good. I'm glad you're reading your book. I'm making apple cider vinegar from my scraps. Those are the peels, tops, and the bottom. And right here is a paper towel with a rubber band about, around it so it can breathe. And the first two days, you leave it alone, and then you, well, I'm going to make a video about it. I don't want to get all into it. I'm going to do a video on it. So you'll see in several weeks, because I'm already videotaping the little pieces, and I'll put them all together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tommy. So we don't have to go and buy apple cider vinegar. If we got, I got seven apple trees. I shouldn't have to buy any more vinegar ever. I should be able to make it and give it away. That's, that's what I plan to do. I can't eat seven apples when they really kick in about two years from now. I can't eat that many apples myself, but I want to give it to my grandkids. When I leave this earth, I hope that one of my children would do a rental property. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm leaving it to them. I would hope that they will make it a family home, kid in college or somebody, you know, caretake it and, and do that guard out there. I plan to be here until I'm 100 though. <laughs> But I plan, <laughs> I hope that they will remember me and all the love that I put in that food for us. And next week when we have our live chat, it's going to be back on Monday night. I'm going to sit outside and then I'm going to walk around and show you some things. Okay? All right. Make sure they take care of that garden. That's right. I'd be tempted to put some sugar and yeast in the jar and make some alcoholic beverage. Stan... I have been watched all of Lead Farmer's videos. I sent the links to my son, my oldest son. He bought me two wine kits for Christmas, including the jars to even make beer or, or ale or cider. And I have everything that I need and I plan to make Every type of uh, 
wine that I can. I'm going to have some libations. <laughs> okay. All right. Anticipating next week. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to be outside. As long as it's not raining, I'm going to just take you and walk you around and show you. And I'm going to show you the good, bad, and ugly because I got two areas that I hardly ever show. Um, but I did a few weeks ago, and Stan was telling me, I think it was Stan. I think it was Stan that sent me a link of the um, parts that I need to do for the speakers on my uh, rain barrels. Was that you, Stan? Yeah. So I'm going to show you the good, bad, and ugly. I still got piles of um, wood chips. I haven't been able to uh, shovel them. Okay. Thanks again for the link, Green Organic Love. And by the way, if you haven't liked this video, please do so. That helps me, the moderator. Yeah, it's been raining a lot in uh, Dallas. We got rain this morning, but it did dry up, and it's getting ready to rain again. I just got alert on my phone, and it's clouding up. But we have flash floods in the Dallas area, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to just flood. It means that the rain is going to come down very hard, very fast, and the wind will be high. And it all but my back door, and I just got hit in the face with a with with a, a lot of rain. It was horrible, and some people even got hail and little hail damage, plants beat up. I've got a lot of root rot on. I think two of my tomato plants I'm gonna lose, but I'm not worried about it because I got a lot of other good stuff going. Do you have an email address? Yes, it's, it's in the link. It's in the description box of all of my videos, except this one because I haven't done it yet. But it is my channel name, Cheryl's Organic, without an apostrophe, Cheryl's Organic Food Forest at gmail.com. And I do answer you back. I may not be able to get to you right away. It just depends on what's going on. But I will answer you back. Tonight I'm going to upload, or tomorrow, I'm going to upload part three of how to grow cheap, healthy food in your emergency garden. And you'll see in that video how I made some more containers to grow the sweet potatoes in and uh, what I'm planting as a companion plant with the sweet potatoes. I got five buckets growing now, big buckets, you'll see. And I also share a, a little damage done to the food forest and then some of the progress. It's not all bad. And I was telling somebody uh, this morning that when you take into consideration that I can garden 365 days of the year, I can't be upset about two tomato plants getting too much water. Right? Because all of us can't do that. Before I moved to this area, I couldn't garden all 365 days of the year. So that's that's better. Cheryl's Organic Food Bank and Community Education Center. Yeah, that has a nice ring. You are too kind. You're very sweet. Randy, is Randy still here? Skinny boy Randy. Thank you for sharing that about the uh, diabetes. That's why I don't eat uh, white potatoes. I only eat sweet potatoes. Now, with that said, I had a white potato last night <laughs> because it was a holiday and my son and his wife and kids brought me over a nice plate and I had a T-bone steak, but I didn't eat any steak yet. I ate half of it for lunch and I'm eat the other half when I get off of here and they brought sausage and I don't eat that, but I had it because it was a holiday and then they had the shrimp skewers with the pineapple, the sweet pepper, the onion and mushroom. It was delicious. And then they had like a cucumber salad. And then they had uh, squash, grilled squash and grilled cucumber. And I felt like this is one time I'm going to eat some of this stuff. So, yeah. So I don't cook. I don't uh, cook or um, grow, grow white potatoes. I love them. I love them. I'm addicted to them. But the longer you stop eating something, you just get used to it. So if I have, have a taste for some potatoes, I'll get a sweet potato. Okay, yes, we're getting too much rain, root rot. It's, it's, it's horrible. But, guys, we just have to do the best that we can. And you're right, hypocentric. I'm going to treat myself every now and then. 
Okay. Okay. So what do you guys want to talk about now? Oh, I have this here. I want you all to remember something. Yes? Uh, about two days ago or three days ago, Homestead Heart did the ground turkey. You all saw that video? You can do your ground turkey and you can do your pasta sauce. You can combine both of them together. Then all you have to do is heat up, uh, cook your pasta. Heat up your pasta sauce with meat. You can do your manwich with meat and your, with your spaghetti sauce or your pasta sauce. And you can just have heat and serve food. I never, ever have to worry about cooking something if I don't feel good. I've showed you this before. I'm going to show it to you again. Chicken soup. It's actually stew because it's real thick. And you can pour the, the grease that comes up to the top. And then grease is uh, animal fat, chicken fat. You can pour it off. Pour over some rice or whatever you want to do or pasta and eat this. Remember to hit the like button. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So I love to can soups. So now, this is what I do right now. I will go in my freezer. One day I'll get up early one morning. I'm going to take out everything in that freezer because I'm going to need to put some other stuff in there. And I'm going to put me a big pot on. And I'm going to put me a, either some smoked turkey wings or some chicken, whatever I have. And I'll just start opening up those packages of vegetables that I blanched and put them in the freezer. This is how I made this. And then you can it. So what I'm saying to you is, if you get a lot of food at one time that you harvest from your garden and you don't have the time to can it, or let's say you down here in Texas, I hope the naked gardener is still in the house because he'll tell you we can get 15 days in a row with temperatures over 100 degrees. One year it was 15 days in a row of 108 degrees. Yes, ma'am. Somebody said it. Naked gardener. You do not want to be kidding when it's hot like that. You'll get up early in the morning. Peppers and onions do not need to be blanched. Grow a lot of them. You can just chop them up, wash them, chop them up, put them in your freezer. They will not lose any taste. Everything else has to be blanched. Put it in the freezer. Wait until it's cool. I'm looking for a date. Wait until September. September. Wait until it's cool to make all that soup and stuff. Because your air conditioner will be running like crazy. Okay? Don't even want to cook in hot weather. That's right. And so some people say, they said, Miss C, you got enough greens to last you all winter. Truth be told, I have enough to last all summer. That's when I don't want to cook because it's too hot. So that's when I open up my greens and things like that. Okay. Need to do a reset on my freezer too. Yeah, get that stuff out of there. Now, there's two things I got to pull out of my freezer because I'm out or very low, and that is turmeric and ginger. And let's talk about that for a minute. I want to share with you how I process it. I wash and scrub the turmeric, and then I boil it. Then the peels will slide off, kind of like beets. Anybody ever cooked beets before? The peels will slide off. It's a long process. That's why turmeric is expensive. Then I slice it up. Then I put it in my dehydrator. Nine drawers. Then after I dehydrate it, then I grind it into a powder. It's a long process. I do the ginger the same way. But when, I, oh, I don't want to drop nothing. When I have enough, I just freeze it. I can walk over here right now and pull out two bags to show you that I have ginger and turmeric in the freezer. Okay, but now I'm growing some more. Honey lemon tea, thank you. Thank you so much, your inspiration. And turmeric and ginger, Linda Parker, you are so right. Love roasted beets, naked gardener. Love, love, love. Ginger is so really good for you. 
It helps with your digestive system. And turmeric helps with inflammation. It has a lot of other medicinal qualities. But I'm telling you why I eat and consume ginger tea for digestive system. Digestive system. It's a lot of stuff I can't digest. And I'm going to tell you, I don't mind telling you, you always see me wearing loose things because I had the breast cancer on the tumor taken out on this side and 16 lymph nodes. This arm is five inches bigger than this arm. So I never wear anything tight so it, I can camouflage it. Does that make sense? So I get swelling of the arms from, from here because those lymph nodes, 16, are missing. But I'm real active, so... And I have a high tolerance of pain, or maybe because it's been 28 years, I don't let it bother me. But I know exercises that I have to do, and I know what foods that I should eat that take down inflammation. Does that make sense? And turmeric is one of them that is really good for inflammation. Yes, we freeze, freeze dinner and we grate it. Okay, very good. All right. Somebody had a question and I said, hold it. And I don't remember what it was. Can you tell me what that question was? There was a question. Who? Okay, yes. Do you combine tumor with black pepper? Yes. You heard about golden milk? Yes. That's turmeric, milk, and black pepper. Deborah Sims said her timer went off. You have survived your first canning adventure. Are you pressure canning or are you water bath canning? If you can come back, if you hear me, Deborah, let me know. Or Debbie Sims. If you're water bath canning, just cut off your, your uh, gas or electric. If you water bath canning, same thing. Do not try to open up the pressure canner. Somebody said they cook with both and they put them in their coffee. Yes. Oh, chamomile tea. Yes. Or oh, some people say chamomile. Some people say chamomile. I have chamomile tea too. I didn't bring one of those out. Mm-hmm. Hi, Nene. 60. Okay. Curcumin is turmeric, mostly turmeric, correct? I'm certain that, that, that it is. Pain from lupus, yes, yes. Golden milk is delicious. Yes. Hey, Shana, now I didn't know you were in here, girl. This is what happens when you put on lipstick and you don't wear it. Since, since the pandemic, I ain't been going to church. <laughs> so I put on lipstick and now I want to peel it off. <laughs> Cumin is a smoked pepper from what I was told. It's the beneficial part of turmeric. Now, that's what I was told. It's the best part of the turmeric. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Randy. I love you too. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see Brian in person again so I can show him one of your videos because my uh, grandson Brian loves some skinny boy Randy. <laughs> You're so positive and very motivating. Okay, if you all don't have any other questions, is it possible to grow lemongrass? Yes, I just put a, did a video about it. Yeah, go back and check my, my videos. In the last week, I got some cuttings off of eBay and I'm growing them. Because I do the lemongrass tea. And also, where do you find your seeds? I buy most of my seeds from Baker Creek. I buy some of them from the, uh, thank you, Miss C. Grando. Thank you. I appreciate you. 
I buy some of them from my local nursery called Callaway's Nursery. Nursery, I do I uh, botanical interests. Those seeds, Baker Creek, and they, they are just wonderful. I always get a very high germination rate. I do find some rare seeds on eBay. Only the merchants that I have checked with before. But I don't like to give out names of merchants in case you all have a bad experience. I don't want you blaming me. So I say check their rating. Okay? When you dehydrate your vegetables, do you can them? Oh, no. You just put them in a mason jar, and you can put those silly um, packs in them, and you could buy them from Amazon. That would absorb the moisture inside of the jar, but I don't use them. Being a cancer survivor, I don't use any chemicals. Even though I know that they are, they are safe to use, I don't use them. Thank you so much for your super chat. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Organic Love, for being there for me. Okay, please do a question and answer live chat. That's what we're going to do next week. We're going to do that out in the food forest. Who said that? Miss Penny, that's what we're going to do next week. Okay? Two inches or more would damage your traps. I need to bring them under the covered porch. Yes, ma'am. Miss Wise, move those plants. If you can move them, move them. Um, I never planted tree kale, but I planted tree collards. And I'll be honest with you, I like Georgia collards better. The tree collards got over six feet tall. I had to stake them up, and they don't taste good in the summertime. So since I can, why not can what I prefer to eat? And that's the Georgia collards. And since I pressure can... I grow my collards, my kale. I do four types of kale, several types of spinach, several types of Swiss chard. I do all of that in the fall of the year, and then I can it all while it's cool. So there was no need for me to keep the tree collars. All it did was uh, attract uh, cabbage uh, worms. So it was just too much work. Another thing I want to tell you, I grew... Um, Spinach, longevity spinach and Malabar spinach. To be honest, I like noble spinach or some of those leafy spinach the best. And even though they were perennial, I gave a couple of those plants away and I don't grow them anymore. I'm at the point now in my life where I grow what I like and what is good for me. Does that make sense? I don't grow a lot of stuff. Um that I don't really necessarily like. Do you grow the red stem or green stem Malabar spinach? I grew both of them. It has a slimy taste in it to me, a little okra-ly, if there's such a word. I like the regular spinach better. And, you, and if you live in a climate where it's not real hot, then try the collar, tree collars and the tree kale. I don't recommend it for my climate. 115 degrees on collars. It's just not worth it trying to keep them alive. Love you too, Randy. Thank you for that. I was thinking about the wrong camera. Okay. All right. Oh, and I want to tell you guys something. And it was Dan's Permaculture Food Forest that brought it to my attention. I have a video out where I'm showing you the Cassava. And I said, one plant came up and the other three didn't come up because I planted in the greenhouse that I heated during the wintertime. Guys, that was not cassava. It was poke salad. Anybody know what that is? I learned about it in the South from my husband. That's where he was from, Mississippi. Poke salad. It's a wild, some people consider it a weed and it can be toxic. You're welcome, Debbie Sims. Did you are you pressure canning or are you water bath canning, dear? Whatever you do, just turn it off. And then when the pressure gauge goes all the way down to zero, if you're water bath canning, you can um I'm not getting these messages. 
Yes, your mother used to cook poke salad. I think it's S-A-L-L-I-D. And uh, some of it grew, the wind, the birds, or whatever, um, uh, you know, scattered the seeds. And then as it started seeding, because I have not ever grown cassava, I, I grew cassava, and it had just a little bitty, you know, new growth, and then I brought it outside too quick last year. So this year, I didn't bring it out too quick. So I really wasn't sure what the leaves exactly looked like until the real ones came up. So I know what I was saying. Dan's uh, permaculture food forest and say that looked like a nitrogen fixer. And I just kept looking at it and looking at it. And then a couple of days later, I went back and I knew what it was. It was poke salad. And uh, so I pulled it up and I'm going to cook it for myself. You have to like boil it, pour the water off, boil it, pour the water off. I think you have to do it like three times. If you don't, it can be toxic. But it actually got that. It's a poke weed. And it, it actually tastes like it's been cooked with bacon or something. I think that's, I don't know. I think it's why they got the name from it. Okay. Thank you, Ann Christy. I appreciate you. At this time, I want everybody that has a YouTube channel to just put yes, Girls Wild in Kentucky. Put yes and your garden zone. Because there are enough channels on here for the newbies to learn from everybody. I have lost some subscribers since my channel started growing. And I hate to say this, but some people don't want to see you grow. They stop watching me because I got a lot of new subscribers. And that's kind of bad. Because there's enough knowledge out there for everybody to gain from. All right. Erica, you have a channel? What's your channel name? Darian Nubian, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You are going to help me buy some more fruit trees. I don't know where I'm going to put them, though. <laughs> so, yes, we have Tommy's Carolina Homestead. Same zone as me, 8A. Skinny Boy Randy, what zone are you in? Linda Parker, is that your name of your channel? Linda Parker? Your grandmother and grandfather used to cook it. They drained it because it's toxic. Right. You have to know what you're doing. Yes, you do it. You, you drain it off three times after you bring it to a boil. That Yeah, Tommy, isn't it sad? And they may even be still watching my videos, but they don't comment. And it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. But I will say this. Some people use their platform to put down others. People, we don't need to do that. We don't need to put down others to build up ourselves. A perfect example of that is Lead Farmer 73. Put those fruit trees in everywhere. I'm glad I can't hardly walk <laughs> through there. <laughs> but I will. I will. Um, I'm going to put some more. But uh, what was I saying? Thank you, Loza Farming. I love you too. Yeah, they think that to, for a way to elevate themselves is to put other people around. I've, I've seen some people ranting and raving about people on YouTube. I'm going like, it ain't that serious. And then you have some people that will come on your channel and they'll put a nasty comment when there's no reason to do that. Come in love. If you want to criticize me or tell me something, send me an email because I'm not one of those old dogs you can't teach a new trick to. I'm a life learner. And there's a way to do anything. Scripture tells us, and I don't want to preach, but everything should be done decently and, in, decently and in order. There's a time and a place for everything. Bloggy Mama, message automatic hill for review. Okay, y'all handled me. I thank you all. Thank you, Talita. Yep, the devil will come, Randy, just when he thinks that you are doing okay. And you, you all know we don't make a lot of money on YouTube. You all know this. But it'll help. It'll help with the supplies. It'll help me with the equipment that I want to get and some more fruit trees. You know, but don't get jealous of people. But it's okay. I've, I've had that to happen. I've, I've gotten promoted. I went from the... Um, 
clinic floor manager of a beauty college to the director of their $2 million brand new school. And all the people I used to sit with and have lunch with and blah, 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 when they found out that I was the one that they selected to run the brand new school with all the new equipment, it was beautiful. They stopped speaking to me. So trust me, I can handle it. And when you find a YouTuber on YouTube ranting and raving about the success of other people and trying to put scriptures in it to twist it all around to make you think that they're so knowledgeable and they're Jesus or something, they got a problem. Ignore them. They got a problem. And they'll come after you. They'll even say your initials. They'll call out your initials. And here I am, just an old lady, 66 years old in a few months, just trying to help people learn how to grow and preserve their food, and you calling my initials out. You know what I did? I just prayed for them. Okay? All right. Will you subscribe to my channel? Thank you so much. Thank you, Mandisa, Left, and 210. Okay. Everybody that has a um, channel have listed your channel. Are there any other questions? Because I don't want to keep you all, because I know that some of you are in a time zone where this is. I'm old, Linda. In my mind, in my, in my mind, I think I could do a lot of stuff. But you know what, Linda? I'm, I'm not as old as I thought I was because during this pandemic, I had to do everything myself. My grandkids used to bend down, pick up the weeds, and you know, do all this, hand me this, and I'll be on the ladder, whatever. I had to do it all. And I learned that I was stronger than I thought I was. But I still have to pace myself and rest. Because I'm not telling you everything that's wrong with me. Because there's a whole lot of things that are right. Okay? But this, this time of quarantine has taught me that I had more strength than I thought I had. Okay? Oh, thank you! I never go anywhere so I put on my little jumpsuit for you all. <laughs> Usually I have on an old raggedy t-shirt with bleach stains in it. And that's another thing I want to share with you all. Those of you who are taking safety precautions, don't go overboard like I did. Do you all know that I was inhaling so much bleach that my hands were peeling and I burned my lungs? I would go, <gasps> and I could feel that, you know what I'm talking about, that raw feeling in there. I was using too much bleach. Because when I would get my packages, I would wipe off the cardboard, wipe every, I was going overboard. So I got these, and this has the right amount. Thank you, Tara. And this has the right amount in it. Guys, we can over sanitize so much that we can make ourselves sick. Because I really was laying in bed thinking I had the virus for a couple of days. And then it hit me. That was that bleach. Mm -hmm. So now I just put a little bit in there, okay? Pressure can, very inspiring. I, had only water canned fruit before. Wow, very good, very good. So don't use too much bleach because you can damage your lungs from that. Okay, all right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if there are any questions, I want to leave you with that. Um, you know that God loves you and I love you too. And when I said I will be there for you, we will FaceTime, email, whatever you need, I will make myself available to you. And I mean that. And some of you don't know me, but you're going to find out that I'm a, a, a woman that stands behind what she says. Okay. When Kenny, how much water goes in the pot? BB Washington, you have to look to the manufacturer's directions. Now I'm going to say this. Water bath canning, you must fill the water up over about an inch or two of the top of the, the jars, okay? Pressure canning is a little bit different. You don't have to have that much water. But I will say that sometimes I do push it and put too much water in the canner. But I'm not telling you guys to do that. And from, from, from now on, I always say, follow your manufacturer's directions. Thank you, Shanana. I appreciate you very, very much. Follow your manufacturer's directions. Okay? And a lot of you are ordering those Presto canners. Those are nice. Somebody emailed me and told me, do I have to get the expensive one like you got, Missy? And the answer is no. I bought all of my stuff when I was getting ready to retire. My first greenhouse, the first big one I bought, is after I retired. And after I paid my mortgage off, I said, I'm out of here. <laughs> Time to go. 
So that's why I bought it because it was a it was the dream canner. But starting off, you do not need that canner. You can use the Presto. Thank you, Miss Talita 360. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Silver Shadow. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Miss Penny. Honey Lemon Tree. Thank you, Aloha Peppers. Teresa Murray, thank you. Shana Na, Kim Vaughn, Your Herb Health, Malik Linda Parker, Comforting One, Miss T. Versation. That's a nice name. Garden with Skinny Boy, Randy, Wanda B, Ordeen, Hypercentric, Oki Homegrown, B.B. Washington, Linda Parker, Tara, Nikki Gardeners. Thank you, Green Organic Love. Thank you so much for being the moderator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ashley Williams, Lolita Edwards, Silver Shadow, Caridus, Caritas, Turbo, Tur Tubo, if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry. Pressure can, very spiring, had only water can. Very good. Miss Grande, I think I mentioned everybody in here. Thank you, B.B. Washington. Thank you, guys. I'm going to sign off. I, like I said, God loves you, and I love you, too. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me and... If I start talking too loud, you all better tell me. I'm documenting. I'm publishing this when I get off of here. You better tell me if I'm talking too loud. I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Love you.